Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to our lesson on measurement. Now, we learned about density, and if you remember correctly, that the two properties of density include mass and they include volume. So in order to find for mass and volume, we need tools and instruments in order to do that. So we're going to take a look at how to use two of them. In order to find volume, what we'll take a look at is using a graduated cylinder, and then to find mass, we'll look at another piece of equipment called a triple beam balance. Let's talk about volume first. In order to find volume, if you remember, volume is how much space in the room it takes up. There's two ways you can find volume. First of all, if you have an object that is flat and has straight edges, you can use that mathematical formula, volume is equal to length times width times height. Because you can then take your ruler and easily measure the different sides and angles of the object. So all I have to do is measure the length, the width, and the height of this prism here and multiply them together and that will give me my total volume. So that's easy. However, there are objects that make it a little bit more difficult to measure length times width times height because they're not flat and they don't have straight edges, such as this jagged stone or this round sphere or this marble. If you've ever tried to put a ruler up to a ball or a marble, you'll notice that it's impossible to measure that. So that's where the graduated cylinder comes into play. These instruments here are called graduated cylinders, and they measure out volume in units called milliliters. In order to use a graduated cylinder, we have to fill it up with water. And we're going to do a couple things with this graduated cylinder because there's a couple of ways you should know how to use it. First off, in some activities, I may ask you to fill up the graduated cylinder to a certain milliliter mark. So for example, let's say I want you to fill this graduated cylinder up to 15 milliliters. All right, so you might take a beaker and pour in a whole bunch of water. And then we want to take a look at it, see if we're close or see if we're there. So what you want to do is you want to get down and get eye level with the graduated cylinder so you can see the, the top of the water here. The next thing you want to do is figure out how many, each, how many milliliters each line is worth. So I know that between 10 milliliters down here and 20 milliliters up here, I have a difference of 10 mils. So I just have to figure out how much each line is worth. If I just simply try counting, I can go 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that tells me that each line is worth one milliliter because it all works out. Now, to start, I asked you to fill this up to 15 milliliters. And if you take a look at it, some kids might look at it and think, okay, I got it up to 15 because the edge of the water is right there. But when you read a graduated cylinder, you don't read the top or the edges of the water. You don't read the highest points. You need to go to the bottom of the curve. The bottom of the curve is what's called a meniscus. And the meniscus is what you are going to line up with the marker for the amount of milliliters that you need. So if you kept pouring water in, you're going to easily overflow and go past the milliliter mark. So there's a really simple way you can get an accurate measurement of volume. So what you want to do is... Take an eyedropper, you want to grab it, and then fill it up with water. And then all you're going to do is take that eyedropper, put it in the graduated cylinder, and you're going to do what eyedroppers do. They're going to, you're going to squeeze them until they drop water. Every time I, I squeeze the bulb, I'm going to drop some water into the graduated cylinder, and the line is going to move up. So I'm going to keep going until my meniscus hits 15. All right, and that's it. Like I said, I asked you to fill this up to 15 mils. And if we take a look at the water, we'll notice that the top of the curve is above 15, but the bottom, the meniscus, what we're supposed to be reading, is touching 15. So I've accurately measured out 15 milliliters of water. So that's how you can measure out a proper amount of water using a graduated cylinder. Now, if I gave you an object and asked you to find the volume of it, what you want to do is you want to take the object and place it in the graduated cylinder. But before you do that, you should write down your starting point. Since we have 15 milliliters here, we'll use that as our starting point. And then I'm going to take an object and I'm going to drop it in the graduated cylinder. So I'll just grab this marble and drop it in and watch the level of the water after the marble hits the bottom. Okay, so if you take a look here, you'll notice that the level of the water has actually changed. It was down at 15. And now it's moved, the meniscus has moved up to 16. That's how we can find the volume of this marble because what it's done is it's displaced or pushed water up into the graduated cylinder, 
causing the water level to rise. So we take the final reading, which is 16 mils. The marble itself isn't 16 milliliters because we already have 15 milliliters in there. So what you want to do is take your final reading and subtract the initial reading from it. We ended up at 16 and we started out at 15. So you subtract 16 minus 15 and that gives you a difference of one. That means the marble pushed the water up one milliliter which means the marble takes up one milliliter of space. And that's how you find volume using a graduated cylinder. Now let's take a look at how we can find the mass of an object. Okay, this instrument here is called the triple beam balance, and this is what's used to find the mass of an object. If you remember from our video from density, mass is how much stuff is in an object or how much matter it has. So we're always going to measure that in grams. Volume was measured in milliliters, or cubic centimeters as we learned the other night, but mass is always measured in grams and we can do variations like kilograms and milligrams and stuff like that, but we'll just stick to the basic unit of grams. Now the triple beam balance has certain parts to it. You have what's called the pan, which is where you place the object that you're massing. You have the adjustment knob, which is the knob that you turn to try to balance this out before you get started. You have your triple beams or your riders, and you have three different types of riders. You have the 100 grams rider, you have the 10 grams rider, and then the one grams rider. And those are basically named after how many grams they go up. All right, and then you have the pointer here. The pointer is the thing you are going to look at to make sure you have it balanced. Now, the goal of using a triple beam balance is making sure that this pointer and this line lines up with that line, so you're balancing it out. A balance is basically a miniature version of the scale in the nurse's office, and I'm sure you remember what that's like. You step on it, and then the nurse is gonna move the, the mass on over until it balances out, and there's your weight. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the light bulb and I'm gonna place it on the pan. Okay, now that we have the light bulb in the pan, you can see that there's an imbalance here. Okay, things are unequal. I have mass over here, but nothing to even it out. So the pointer has shot all the way to the top. So what we have to do is find the right amount of mass here on our riders and drop this pointer down to this line. So the first thing you want to do is start off with the 100 grams and you keep going until it starts to move. So 100 grams isn't enough to move it, so I'm going to go to 200 grams. 200 grams is not enough, so I'm going to move it again. 300 grams drops it to the end. We know that 300 grams is too much mass, so we bring it back. Once we figure out how many hundreds of grams an object may have, then we go to the tens to try to get a more accurate reading. So I'm going to go 10, 20, 30. It's starting to drop, so we keep going. 40, that's close, but it's not perfectly lined up. So we then go to 50. If you take a look at 50, 50 has now dropped the pointer below the line. So 50 grams on this rider is too much, so we move it back to 40. Now we have to go to our ones rider. So our ones rider, typically on a balancing class, you want to use your pencil tip to move it across, because if you use your fingers, you might bounce it up and down. You have to waste time waiting for it to settle. But if you're careful enough with your pencil tip, you can move it across with very little movement and bouncing. So we're just going to move this across right now. So let's drag the ones rider over until we get a perfect balance. Okay, so I'm moving it and it's not lined up yet, so I'm going to continue to move it. Okay, so if we take a look, we are perfectly balanced at this point here. So now what I have to do is I have to figure out how many grams I moved on the ones rider. As you can see, I've moved to five grams here, but I had to go past five grams. So now I have to figure out how many tenths of a gram that I moved over. This is five, 5.1, 5 5 5.2, 5.3, 5 5.4, 5.5, and the arrow lands at 5.6. So I had to move over 5.6 grams on that rider. Now all you have to do next is add them up. You take the 200 grams, and you add the 40 grams that you position the riders at. So that gives you a total of 240. And then you take a look at the ones gram that you moved, which is 5.6. All you have to do is then add 240 plus 5.6. And that'll give you a total mass of 245.6 grams. And that's how much mass this light bulb has. That's how you use a triple beam balance. And that's also how you use a graduated cylinder to find the volume of something. So those are the tools that we're going to be using. And I hope this video was helpful.